I was flabbergasted watching this thinking, why hadn't this happened before? There, I think there are a lot of different answers. I think Nina is someone we, we need right now. I think it, there is, um, you know, a rebirth of, of, a, of a movement. And I think Nina's music is something that coincides with that rebirth. And I, so I think there, there's a need for her. Um, I think that there, um, the estate of Nina Simone was ready for a whole bunch of reasons to allow a filmmaker to have creative freedom um, to tell Nina's story. Um, I think that was a hard place for them to get to because Nina's story had been uh, you know, so often misunderstood and misrepresented. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, I think those are the, the reasons that there was a readiness for it to happen now. Um, and then there was a trust that um, I had from them. Did you go into this making a film about one woman and come out the other end finding that this was a different woman? I think Nina, to me, is she's many different women, and I think to her fans, she's also she means different things to different people. I think for some people, she's a civil rights icon. For other people, she's a virtuoso musician. Um, for other people, she's a boundary-busting feminist, um, you know, rock star to to look up to. So I think you know she she's many different things. Um, she's someone with, of course, an endlessly complex psychology. Uh, I, you know, when I started making the film, I didn't realize the depths of all those different elements. Um, but I, of course, I came to appreciate them as I listened to her and I read her her diaries and letters. And um, you know, the, I, I knew those aspects. I didn't appreciate their the depths and the, the sort of craggy facets of, that each of them had. I would imagine the documentarian has two nightmares, which are different sides of the same coin. One being too little material and one being too much. Mm. Which side were you on? Well, you know, the music is like this incredible, you know, gift and, and wealth and, you know, like, incre you know, the, to, to kind of choose amongst Nina's songs is um, you know, a most delicious dilemma. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we chose songs by, you know, their, their narrative value that um, we use songs to advance the narrative, not just, you know, because of their purely aesthetic qualities or how much I might just love a song. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the, we started off from an, with an archival point of view on this film. We wanted to find as much Nina as we could. And um, one of the great gifts was the audio we found, all the interviews which start at, as early as 59 and go through the late 90s of Nina telling her story to various interviewers or co-biographers when she was working on her, her memoir. Um, and so we had a wealth of Nina talking about her own life stuff that you know had never been collected or listened to except by those uh, interviewers. Um, and that was wonderful. You know, that was an extraordinary gift to really listen to her processing her own, the questions about her own life that interviewers were asking her. Uh, there were moments that you recreated when she's a little girl playing piano in the church and walking along those dangerous railroad tracks. How did you come to decide that was the way to tell that part of the story? Well, we found wonderful archival material um, by a documentarian uh, working in the South in the 30s and 40s and 50s named H. Lee Waters, who shot everyday life um, in small southern towns. Um, and so I felt like we could paint a picture of, of Nina's environment as a child with that footage except this little girl playing the piano. Um, so we chose to kind of, you know, I, I studied H. Lee Waters' material, and then we chose to shoot a little girl playing the piano to kind of put Nina in that environment that, that we found there. And... and W working with the family, working with the estate, um, was there veto power? Was what 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 power was put into your hands as yeah. the filmmaker? Well, I had ultimately the final cut of the film, um, and uh, Lisa, the, Nina's daughter, was extraordinary. I mean, I met her when I first pitched myself as a director for the project. Um, I didn't talk to her until, you know, I, I, well, and we had a great meeting and we talked and she told me some of her stories and then I met her again nine months later when I spent a day interviewing her. Um, and then I showed her the film, you know, another six or seven, eight months later before the film went to Sundance and she hadn't, she gave no comments, she had no notes and she said, you know, mommy's story's been told, the truth is out there and I can, I can move on. And that was the that was her interaction with the film 
I mean, and that was that was all of it. In terms of any kind of, yeah, there were there was never a, a veto of anything. And for her daughter, did her daughter ask anything of you? The question of, I want this film to tell this about my mother. I mean, I think the the domestic violence um, that went on in her home it, that it was important for her to express that um, and have that be corroborated by others um, who I spoke to. I think that was also important to her. No, I think it's in there. I think what what she talked about and you know what I put in the film is it was what was it, that was what was important to her to express about her mom. What what influence do you think she's had nowadays on music? It's huge. I mean, the artists today who kind of give props to Nina Simone or feel like they're standing on her shoulders are some of the greatest artists and and you can't and there are so many of them who kind of have you know expressed support and inspiration from her, you know, from you know, people like Alicia Keys to people like Lauren Hill to John Legend to Common. I mean, there's a real um, Bob Dylan, you know, I mean, there's just a, a, a love and a regard for her um, amongst musicians and performers. That's pretty stunning. As a documentarian, you can finish the film, but do you ever leave the subject? Does it stay with you? No, and the most wonderful thing about Nina is, you know, you can just, I can listen to her all the time and have this, you know, kind of very three-dimensional, rich experience of a, of a human being. So unlike, you know, Bobby Fischer, I can't just look at a chess match and kind of have it. <laughs> but, you know, with Nina, we can all be is, with isn't her. There, doesn't ESPN have a chess channel that <laughs> you could turn They don't. They really don't. But, but, um, but, you know, it's wonderful to have Nina around, you know, all the time. And, you know, I listen to her all the time, and my kids know all her songs. It, do you think that she will now be more regarded in this country in death? in part because of the, you're bringing back her music and in a time and a context where her politics may be more meaningful or acceptable? I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there seems to be a moment of celebration. I mean, I went into Starbucks the other day and they are playing Nina Simone. I mean, maybe they've always been doing that, but there does seem to be a, a, a desire for her music right now. And I, I'm sure that the film is well, is one part of that. And, and there are other artists, um, you know, performing musicians who are doing tributes to her. And yeah, I think that, that, um, that maybe she'll, yeah, she'll, she'll be around us more. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing us this story of a remarkable American whose story I think was largely unknown. Thank you so much. Thank Liz you. Garbus. Thank you. Thank you.